And that's what Jesus tells her. He said he uses uh, an expression in, in that day, dogs. Dogs was an expression for Gentiles. What in the world uh, do you know about me? You can't come into the temple worship to learn about me. How in the world could you possibly know about me? She said, Lord, even the dogs will eat the crumbs off the table. Amen. What she was saying was this. I might not come into worship service, but I can put my ear up against the wall. Amen. And I hear a word here, and I hear a word there. And she heard the word, she believed the word, she confessed the word, and she was a Gentile. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See, sometimes uh, we think just because you go to church all your life, no. that makes you saved. No. That just makes you a devil with a, with, with, with a halo. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. See, you you, you got to be there sometimes. But this woman is a Canaanite woman. You all see that in verse 22, Matthew 15, verse, it says, Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and did what? Cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. Huh? She cried, shrieked, screamed to the top of her voice, Yes, you are! Elio! Elio means have mercy on me. Have mercy. You see, people who shriek, normally that's the cry of a person in pain. Well. Oh, have anybody ever hurt? <laughs> have you hurt so badly that all you could do was just lay there and just muffle your scream because you're hurting so bad? You don't know where you're coming or whether you're going. Oh, they can pump morphine and any other medicine in you, but it won't relieve that pain. That's what this word is all about. This is a woman. This is a man who is hurting down to the pit of their soul and their relief is only in the person of Jesus. Jesus. Well. And they are screaming to the top of their lungs. Look at Bartimaeus. Oh, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. It just shows you how those who had sight, John, had missed the opportunity to be blessed of Jesus. And here's a man who couldn't see anywhere and was actually blessed of Jesus. It says here, that by calling Jesus, so you got to catch these words. The Bible is not something you just read. It's something to understand. By calling Jesus, yes, you were, the son of David, the blind man was affirming that Jesus was the Messiah. Amen. That's what he did. He called him by the name of God himself. He used God's name. Yahweh. Yahweh Shua. Which is to say what? The Lord is my Savior. Save me. That's the cry of Hosanna. Right? Hosanna. Save us. I'll tell you this. The Bartimaeus, see, and the interesting thing about, he didn't do this by sight. Because the Bible is very plain to let us know that he is blind. So what he's about to experience is not by sight. But he heard. This man is sitting there blind and he's tuning out all the noise of the world. And he hears the name of Jesus. Now, you see, what had Bartimaeus heard? Because faith comes by hearing. What did he hear? Here's what he heard. He heard about a man named Jesus had turned water into wine. Who did that? Oh, his name was Jesus. Now, he had heard yeah. about a man that fed 5,000. Yeah. Huh? He, he fed him uh, 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 with two fish and five loaves of bread. He heard about the great I am. He heard about the one that said, I am the bread of life. I am the only bread that ever came down from heaven. He heard about the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. <laughs> see, so many of us get that story wrong, see, because the woman with the issue of blood wasn't healed because she touched the hem of his garment. There was no power in his garment no more than it is in this coat. She touched him. Jesus said, who touched me? He didn't say, who touched the hem of my garment? 
So you see, blind Bartimaeus had heard about the one that touched him. Because yes, Jesus cried out, who touched me? Yes. And the rest of them chastised Jesus. Are you following your mind? You see how many people out here pushing and shoving and grabbing, trying to get to you, and you ask us who touched me, but they didn't understand. She touched him. She had touched Jesus down to the depths of his soul, so much so that he turned around. Who touched me? And the woman came and confessed. It was I. And Jesus told her, what, daughter? That what? Faith have made thee whole. See, Jesus has been healed. He said, your faith. You, you see the thing? You see what he's going to tell blind Bartimaeus? He said, Bartimaeus, you are healed because you believe. Yes. Believe what? That I am. Yes. That I am. Yes. You believe that I am the Christ. Yes, uh, that God sent me into the world. That whosoever believeth on me. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, I tell you, he said, Brother Mayor, just as he told the woman in Canaan, huh, I have a blessing. What's your name on it? He said, oh, I know about you, ma'am. I know you don't spend all your money running in and out to doctors. Oh, I know your story. I know you're now bankrupt and you're miserable in your body. Uh, but ma'am, uh, my healing begins when man's ability fails. Uh, and so... He stepped into her condition. Huh? You see, they couldn't do anything for Bartimaeus. So you got to understand the, the, the thinking of the Jewish community in that day. See, this is part of what we call the context. You see, these were known as afflictions. Afflictions. And it was believed that any time you were afflicted, it was because you had sinned a great sin. And God himself punishes you for your sin. Therefore, God afflicts you. That's what leprosy was all about. And so what was the reaction when you were afflicted to drive you out? This woman had no business being in the crowd. It was, and see, and even she observed the custom because she knew if she put her hands on Jesus, what would that have done to Jesus? It would have made him unclean. That's why she touched the hem of the garment, so as not to defile him. But Jesus didn't pay that no mind. He said, who touched me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he wasn't talking about physically touching him either. She had become one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And where Jesus is, there can be no sickness. Mm -hmm. Her sickness, her affliction had to flee. So if God afflicts you, then only God can remove your affliction. Mm -hmm. So when her affliction went away by touching Jesus, they knew for certain that he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's what they knew that day. Yeah. Oh, they knew they had God in the midst walking amongst them. That's what Blind Bartimaeus knew that the one that they saw in the flesh huh, was God himself. And he said, if I can just get to God, I know my condition will be made whole. He was ready to receive. See, that's the important part there, too. That's not my sermon. But when Jesus passes by, make sure you're ready to receive. I'm pastor. I'm pastor. Don't find yourself out of position to receive. Huh? So many people miss their blessing because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time when the blessing comes through. You got to be exactly where God ordained that you should be. Huh? Sometimes we get so wrapped up in what we're doing, God passes us back and we don't even see. It. But Bartimaeus saw it. He said, I know that the one who is in our midst is God himself, and he called him by the name of God, and he called him the son of David, which in Hebrew is Messiah. And he told him, have mercy on me. And he's screaming to the top of his lungs. And he didn't wait. Bartimaeus didn't wait till Jesus got there to shout. Huh? But he shouted before Jesus got to where he was. He was already screaming out the name of Jesus before he got within this. And since Bartimaeus had heard 
Since he had heard that the living word of God, did y'all catch that? No, Jesus is the word. He is the word. So when he heard that the living word of God was now in his midst, he spoke the word. Jesus! He spoke that word. The only word that heaven has ever given us by which we can and must be saved. Because Bartimaeus saw the true character of Jesus and he saw that he was God in the flesh. Huh? That's what John told us. And he dwelt amongst us in human form. So he cries out to Jesus. Bartimaeus didn't need nobody to help him to get happy that day. Well, he got happy just knowing that Jesus was passing by. He didn't need nobody to pray for him at that moment. He just needed to get the attention of Jesus Christ. He didn't need nobody to help him sing. He was a choir all by himself. All he needed to know was that the living word of God was near. And the Bible says he began to shout. He got his shout on that was it then. The word is here. Huh? See, we don't shout until the choir sings their heart out. Well, huh? When they're on their last breath, Jesus will, oh, oh, they're just short of needing oxygen. Somebody was going to thank you. Bartimaeus didn't need that. He just needed to know that the living word of God was passing by. And guess what he decided? I'm not going to miss this opportunity. Huh? See, you got to know, when God is passing by, don't let the opportunity pass you by. Amen. Don't be passive. See, we, we become so passive in our faith, we just sit back comfortably. You've got to be aggressive in this thing. He said, I'm not going to let it pass me by. People rebuked him, trying to keep him from taking advantage of the opportunity that God had given him. Jesus didn't walk by everybody, but he walks by you today. Are you going to let that opportunity pass you by? Uh, today, the same thing happened. Soon as people start praising the Lord, I wish they would sit down. <laughs> I wish they would stop singing. Uh, let me give you a new flash. I've been saying this now for almost 70 years. There are going to be football games today. Well, and if Jesus tarries, there are going to be football games in 2020. Right. I've learned how to change my priorities around. Come on now. Mm -hmm. I could care less at the end of the day who wins the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who considers himself to be a really astute sports scholar? I mean, not the tricky, because I, I, I don't know the answer. I got a simple question. Who won the Super Bowl 10 years ago? <laughs> I ain't got a clue. First of all, I got to figure out what 10 years ago was. <laughs> I don't know what that was. So somewhere around 2009, who won the Super Bowl in January, February of 2009? I don't know. I don't know. And people, and some people honestly don't care. And, and, and so when people come to me, Pastor went too long. You know what I tell people? If Pastor preached too long, get up and go. You're not going to offend me. I'm not going to form any thoughts about you. Because you got your soul to save, That's right. just like I got my soul to save. Yeah. Yeah. So I must do what God called me to do. You know why? Because there was a time when I was the blind Bartimaeus, and Jesus was passing me by. And God said, Clive, this day I'm going to suck at your house. This day, I'm going to tabernacle with you. And I did not let that opportunity pass me by. Oh, I tell you, I thank God for Jesus that one day, yeah. Jesus came down my street where I had been begging all my life. I tell you, I used to like, I was like Sam Cook. Sam Cook said I was like a river. What's the next word? <laughs> Running ever since. <clears throat> you see, a river is always in motion. You understand? A river. And he said, that's the soul of a man. That's what Sam Cook was saying. A man's soul is always lapping, always searching, and doesn't even know what it's searching for. That's why you can never find peace, because you're searching in all the wrong places. What you just need to do is be and salvation will be in your house. Amen. That's what you got to do. 
That's what you got to do. That's what Sam said. And Sam said a day came when what happened? Oh, Y'all too young. His change came. He said, y'all know that song. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They don't know the words yet. Sam Cook said, that a change is going to come. Oh, I thank God that my change came. See, like blind Bartimaeus. Huh? You think about what the Lord has done for you. Now, what makes you get your shower? Huh? Is it because one day in 2019 you were blind and Jesus was passing by and you cried out and in 2019 you saved your soul? Or maybe in 2019 you lost that job and didn't know where and how you were going to pay that bill when Jesus passed you by? Huh? Uh, maybe one day you were in a car accident uh, and for a moment there you don't know if you're going to live or if you're going to die because it's happening so fast. But then Jesus passes you back. Uh, yeah. And what did you do uh, when Jesus passed you back? Did you cry out? Uh -huh. Who did you call when it all went wrong for you that day? I tell you, don't let the opportunities of life pass you back. And Jesus is going to pass you back. Jesus is here today. And don't let the opportunity to be saved pass you back. Don't count on tomorrow. Because tomorrow just may not occur. Huh? I'm reading back over the holidays here. I don't know, going down Interstate 64, all of a sudden, 69 cars ran into each other. 69 cars in the twinkling of an eye created a massive accident on Interstate 64. And I can assure you that not one person involved in an accident planned on an accident that day. That's not the thing they thought was going to happen in their life that day. But out of nowhere, there was this massive accident. We got to learn how to get our shout on when God blesses us. Amen. This man, Amen. the Bible says when he called the name of Jesus and Jesus said, come here, come to me, said he yanked his coat off. He jumped up and said he ran to Jesus. And Jesus said, well, now that you're here, what is it that you will have me to do Amen. for you? I'm asking you today, what do you want God to do for you today? Huh? You have not because you have not. Huh? You haven't yielded yourself to the master. Huh? You haven't yielded nor submitted yourself to the will of God. God is ready to move in your life today just as he did Bartimaeus. See, he didn't just stop stepping into lives the day of Bartimaeus. Jesus is here today and he's asking each and every one of us, what do you want? Now that you have my undivided attention, I am the creator of the universe. I can do all things but fail. So what is it that you will have of me today? And Bartimaeus told him, I once was blind, but I want to see. I want to see. And the Bible says that Jesus told him, your faith, your faith. He didn't just heal his eyes. He restored Bartimaeus to a full condition. And the Bible says, your faith has made you whole, complete, lacking nothing, Bartimaeus. Look at what God wants to do in your life today. Look at it. You didn't just happen here today. You didn't just accidentally and oopsie walk into this door. You know how many church buildings or places that call themselves churches exist just in Prince William County? Mm. Man, I mean, there's a, there's a church on every corner. Two or three in every shopping center. At least two or three in every school in Prince William County. Amen. So you didn't just accidentally go to church and end up here today. You see, there is a God that orders your footsteps. Amen. And God had you to come here for a reason. Because God is telling you, I'm passing by today. Now, what will you have of me? I'm passing by right now. Are you going to cry out to me? Or are you going to let Jesus pass you by? Huh? Hoping for another time. Huh? Jesus said, no, today. 
today you hear my voice, harden not your heart, but come unto me. Huh? I thank God. See, I, 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 you know, I've been a young man. Well, I've been a boy. And there's one word that best characterizes my youth. Foolish. <laughs> Foolish. Made all the wrong choices. And I love it when people tell me that, Pastor, you don't know anything. Or it's going to say, stupid is. Stupid is. I know stupid. I know it when I see it. Because I did. I did. And it doesn't take a genius to make poor choices. Well, people with college degree well, make poor choices. Yeah. People with advanced college degree make poor choices. People who think can't nobody tell them nothing have already made poor choices. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. I can't tell you how many times I laughed at the Christians, scorned the Christians, made fun of the Christians, until one day, Jesus passed. We got. Let me tell you a short story. I mean, it's really short. Jesus passed, showed up, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. 1982, November 1982. I was doing my team. So doing your team ain't new. Okay? I'm wide open. Captain in the army. You can tell me nothing. Wide open. Had decided I was going to get out of the army. I had submitted my resignation. I was going to get out. I was going to take a job down in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Amen. I had just flown back in from an interview back in the Fort Seal and um, sitting in my room that night. I had a little room in it, what they call the Bachelor Officers Quarters. So that's where I was staying up in 